All right, hello everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, today I'm gonna talk about Artifact Hub. And uh, one of the things that'll tell you is I've got a lot of slides because Artifact Hub is very visual. And so if you want to get the slides afterwards, there will be a link at the end if I fly by them too quickly. All right. So have you ever searched for an app that you wanna run in Kubernetes? Maybe one of those things that you wanna grab something off the shelf and just run somebody else's stuff and you go try to find it in a general search engine. Odds are you're gonna have a hard time because there's gonna be lots of stuff it's gonna find. They'll find blog posts on it, tutorials, and other things on it. And maybe, you know, in, in this case, you know, you're looking for a Helm chart or a container or something, but maybe you're also looking for something else, like a policy. You wanna have policies around it, right? There's lots of policy engines these days, and you might want a policy that's gonna help you control some of that stuff. Try and find a policy. And when you go to the search engines, it can be pretty hard to find those, those things, right? They're generic, they're designed to give you everything out there, they're designed to give you things like, you know, what's the latest, maybe not what's the most useful or been around and the most solid, they've got their own algorithms for it. So how do you find those things? And this is where Artifact Hub comes in because there was a problem finding these kinds of distributed things out there that many of the projects and people are using and distributing, and that's where Artifact Hub came in to solve that problem. Um, and, you know, what, you know, just to make it easy to find. But it didn't just do it for one or two things. We looked at a lot of things and said, there's all of this different stuff out there, right? These are the different kinds of artifacts that can be discovered through Artifact Hub today. You'll see things like there's three different policy engines out there and their policies. There's Kyverno, there's OPA Gatekeeper, and there's Kubewarden, right? You'll see container images, Helm charts. There's plugins for various systems. Um, there's Tekton, right? Stuff for Tekton. What you're doing in this cloud native space, how do you find it when it's distributed all over the place? And this is a centralized store to do that. Now, it can be run on its own, but we also have artifacthub.io. And so it came together to find all these types. Um, but I'll tell you, when I was looking at this, and I was originally doing it a little cheater, Artifact Hub has actually made it easier to find things in search engines too, because when I was doing for it, I said, find me a chart for this. And the general search engines pointed right back to Artifact Hub to say, hey, this is where you can find more. So it didn't just help find distributed things, it actually helps bubble it up in those general search engines. All right, so who am I before we get this started? Hi, I'm Matt Farina. I'm one of the maintainers on Artifact Hub. Um, and I work on it, I work at Sousa on Rancher, and I've been doing it since the beginning, and you might know me from something like Rancher Desktop, where you can run Kubernetes and containers on your Mac, Windows, Linux system, um, you can run Wasm, build that stuff right on your desktop, or maybe you know me from Helm, right? I am one of the Helm maintainers, I've been doing this for a long time, and uh, Helm is actually where Artifact Hub and all of this started, because Helm's been around for years. And it started all the way back with a Helm problem that we had, and it went beyond Helm, but it was a Helm problem. You see, we used to have this thing called the Helm Hub, hub.helm.sh. And when it first started, it displayed things that we had in our own charts repository. Helm 2 had a number of example charts, and people said, hey, I want my charts in there. And so people kept adding their own charts to it. Then it became a centralized repository for charts. And then we are hosting this. And then it turned out people downloading these things all over the internet was petabytes of bandwidth a month, right? And then it was a massive maintenance burden. How do you have different teams, have permissions to do different things? It was just a mess. And this system, this UI, didn't scale to handle this. And so Helm eventually broke up and went to distributed repositories where companies and organizations could have their own repositories. And the system didn't scale. In fact, at one point it took like 30 seconds for this to load to display the few thousand of them we had because it was designed for something small. And we needed a new system that could handle the scale of charts going out. Right? And it was powered by software called Monocular, um, now Archive, that had been developed really for on-prem solutions. It was not designed for cloud scale or you know, web scale or those kinds of things. It was designed, I've got a company, I've got a few charts, and I wanna make those repositories known for people. Right? But you also had Operator Hub at the same time. And that's just an example of another thing that had another type of artifact that they were trying to share and get to be widely used and adopted. 
And so Dan Cohen, who is the founding executive director of the CNCF, said, we got a problem here. If every one of our projects tries to create their own hub to find things, you're gonna have all of these places all over the place. And it's gonna be distributed, you're duplicating a ton of work, especially since most of these projects are working on lower level things. Maybe we can come together on this. Maybe there's a space for something that does it. And that's how Artifact Hub was born. It was born to say, all of these artifacts out here, let's have one way and one place to discover these things and, and go even far beyond that. All right, and most of the development since that first launch back in 2020 has been done by uh, Sergio and Cynthia. And they've done just an amazing job coding. We've added over 20 different types of artifacts. There's been lots of pull requests working with the CNCF community across the board. It's now an um, incubating project with lots of things going on with it. But we've done a lot of work over time to build this out since it first launched all the way back in 2020. Um, so this is Artifact Hub today. It starts with just a basic search setup, search system. It looks like it's easy to use, and it is, because you can just go search for things, right? And so you go search for something. Um, oh, sorry. We're going to first walk through those different things I said at the beginning, right? We're going to walk through uh, how do you find stuff in it? How do you analyze it? Because there's so many things out there. Uh, how do you know what's good, what's not good, what problems are? Does this meet my use case? Can I trust it? Right? How do you know those things? Because it's not just a discovery, you've got to evaluate it. And sometimes that's not the easiest thing to do. And then how do you share your artifacts, either through Artifact Hub, adding them, or with others? Right? So let's talk about finding it. So you start with the uh, Artifact Hub website, and you can search for something. We got autocomplete, and it'll find the, the top things based on ranking factors and things like that. Um, so that's an easy way to just get started. You can click right through. Or you can go right in and see the search listing, right? And it's just like the search that you're gonna to come to know and use and use all over the place. But one of the things that has kind of maybe fallen out of fashion someplace, but is really used to turn some dials on this, right, is faceted search. We do get into faceted search to let you have some control over that. Are there certain types of artifacts, certain characteristics, certain licenses that you're looking for? Right? We detect those, we'll bubble those up in um, facets where sometimes you're trying to key those in in a general search engine and hope it gives you something back. We wanted to put the control in the user's hands. So you can get the results and they are easily found here. Where am I? So let's go ahead and take a look at one. So you went to results and you went to one of them. Here I pulled up Postgres and this is a Helm chart. And you've got all this information here, right? So let's look at it. Postgres, you wanna learn how to install it? There's an install button. And when you come in, it gives you the commands to use with the tool to install it. In fact, for each of the artifact types, that's one of the things we do. If it's got a tool or a methodology to install it, we're gonna give you that install button with the instructions on what to do right there. And that's for each of the more than 20 different artifacts, we wanna make it easy. So you go in, you find something, you can see how to install it, and you can get going. Right? But the results aren't just available on Artifact Hub. Here's an example of using the Helm CLI right now, and you can search for something using the Hub, and it gives you those results right there. Because we've integrated Helm into Artifact Hub, so that way, right from the command line, or right from the, you know, even the SDK, you can search for things, and it'll call out to Artifact Hub, get the latest result, and provide you with the information you need. And that's because this is all powered by an API that anybody can integrate with. Any project can integrate with this API and um, do that. All right. And it is, we do have a search specific API in there along with other things. So users, everything else is API driven, but there's a search API specific. You can search by types, you can search across all those types. I'll touch more on that in a few minutes. All right. So let's look at analyzing it, because I think this is one of the powerful things about Artifact Hub. You've got these things you've discovered. How do you know? You've got five different ways of doing Postgres. How do you know which one you want to use? Which one you're going to trust? How can you tell? So let's look at that. Let's go look for Prometheus, right? Another CNCF project. They've done a lot of work to be involved and um, display their stuff here and make it available for people. But there's a lot of things you can see here. Like one of them, you can see there's these things in the lower right corner, just even on the search listing, but even on the full page, you got some symbols there. And one of them says, is it a CNCF project? Because this is a CNCF project, we call out those other CNCF projects to let you know. 
And you know, I've had some conversations around the conference and people have said, you know, can I use this? Is it proprietary? Is it not? What license? Well, if it's in the CNCF, you know and you can use it. It's Apache 2. It's available for us to use. And you know, we tell you that. Uh, we also tell you, is this you know, um, verified, right? Have we verified the publisher? And this is a step where somebody's actually got a request to improve it. So it's not just somebody throwing something up there and saying, hey, this thing's up there. We actually go through the steps to say, are you a verified publisher? Do you prove that you own the repository or the location that you're shipping it from? Is this yours, right? Because I could go create an, you know, something and list it in here that I have no control over, no instance of, and try to pull people in, things like that. We'll verify, is this really the publisher? We've got ways of doing that. And uh, it's only upon request. So we take that time to say, is this real? Are they verified? Do they have control of what's going on? Um, and then there's the official, right? Uh, official tells you, is this the, you know, who's delivering this? The people who create it. So if my company goes and ships Prometheus and makes it available here, it's not coming from the project, it won't get this, right? So the company or the organization that produces the software that's being delivered, they're the only ones who can get the official stamp. And this is, again, a step we have to go through and verify just to make sure we're lining that up. Right? And this gives people kind of that, that knowledge to say, is this coming from the source? Is this where I want it from? Just another little factor in the decision-making method. Right? And so we'll come back to Prometheus here. All right. So let's go to the next thing in analysis here. We've got, if you look on the right sidebar, we've got other things. So we've got templates here. And if you go into the templates, right, this is a Helm chart in this case for Prometheus to install it, something they deliver. But you want to go take a look at it. Are you going to download the archive, expand it, look at it, dig into it? We also want to make that easy. So we've got an explorer that lets you dig through all of it and be able to visualize the templates. So if you want to go look at what's being generated and dig around inside, you can do it right there without jumping through lots of extra hoops, lots of extra work to see what's going on. If you know how to read this and you want to read it, you can. And you know it's got source highlighting. You can see each of the files. You can see what's going on here. But we even go a step further than that, because in the top right, you'll see you can actually compare it to others. And so you can see the lists of each version. So maybe I'm on one version, I'm going to see what changed, what changed in what templates. I can then go compare it to other versions by selecting that other version, and then I can see a diff. And I can go through all of the things in the diff that tell me what's going on with this particular artifact. And this is one of those things where if you want to dig in deeper, if you want to drill in, we are providing that means for people to look around, right? And then we've got, what is that? Ah, the default value. So Helm charts come with default values, right? And you want to see what are these defaults. I want to read them. I want to know what's there, what I can override, how I'm going to do things with that. So we, again, show you the default values here. And here you can go in. You can see the default values. You can scroll through. It's a YAML file, source highlighted, so you can go through and read that. And it's that same kind of thing because, again, you can compare to see what changed in other versions. Again, you know, we know that people want to see what's been added, what's changed. Does not matter? What do I want to do? We want to make all of this information widely available so that people can analyze charts. And, and this will apply to other artifacts, too. All right? And the next one we have is uh, the value schema. So one of the things that some people take advantage of is Helm can have JSON schemas. And we want to make that available. If a chart has a JSON schema, uh, we make that available for people to go take a look at. And so you can see the schema. You can see what's in it, what information's there. Schemas can be very valuable because Helm, when it's installing something, will validate the values you pass in against that schema to make sure everything works. But it can also be used to generate user interfaces and do other really interesting things with it. But we make that available for people to look at and to go through and see what's going on. All right. And then the sidebar. There's a ton of useful information in the sidebar here. And I'll touch on some of it. But the sidebar is artifact appropriate for whatever the artifact is. We try to surface the right information for that artifact to help you analyze it. And to touch on a few things here, uh, there's a security report. And you can go look at the images that whatever the artifact does, in this case a Helm chart, points to. What do you find when it's scanned? How often is it scanned? What does it show up? 
And so you can see things like, here's an overview of the images and how they scored in the latest version. You can go back to older versions and see that as well to see where they're at today. And it's using Trivi to do the scanning. And if you go down, you can dig deeper and you can see which layers have which issues. And so you can see, okay, they're using this base layer, what's going on? And you can even drill down to see what are the actual vulnerabilities in there? Can they be mitigated? Are they just not mitigating it? What's going on? And so we try to do this for as many things as we can across it because we know security is a valuable thing. You can see who's keeping on top of it, what they're using for base images, and, and get that kind of analysis. All right. So then, ah, yes, back to the sidebar here. Um, so in the sidebar, again, there's, there's just more information. You've got things like um, the, where the source comes from, what the license is, and any of that other information. If they have pointed off to websites somewhere, you want to go find the project website, we do expose that. Who are the authors? How often do they update? Information like that. And then at the bottom, we pull out stats. Are people coming, viewing this, looking at it, digging in into what versions? Uh, where we can generate statistics on things, because we don't have insight into how often it, you know, an artifact is pulled from wherever it's at. The statistics are based around what people do with their interaction to Artifact Hub. So you can see, are people coming here? Are they looking at it? Are they evaluating? You can get an idea of how often it shows up, which gives some metric of usage. It doesn't cut, touch on everything, but it does give some metric on how often it's being discovered to the best that we're able to do here. Right? But it's not just Helm charts, as I've been saying. We've got over 20 different artifacts. There's different artifacts that have things, too. So let's look at some of the others. Here, we have uh, something from Meshery, right? another CNCF project, and it has artifacts as well. And for that, you, know, you get the page. It can be exposed in search results. You can use faceted search to discover those things. And we've got different things in the right sidebar that tell you you know, what's appropriate there. And you'll see the install, but there's other things here. So Meshery has designs. Right? And so if you go look at Meshery and you choose to look at the designs, you then get to open it up and see their design. Now, again, it's more YAML because that's what we do in this space, lots and lots of YAML. But you can get into that design, you can read it, you can evaluate it, and you can see what's going on with the design. But it's not just designs here. You're going to see, you can actually bring up um, images. You, they can, you know, an artifact can say, hey, we've got these images you want to see, what things look like, how they interact with. And so for something like Meshery, this is a very useful thing to be able to present those things because they can show you diagrams of the designs. And you can get in, you can see the designs. Again, this is all Meshery specific, so people who would know Meshery can go ahead and do that. But this is appropriate and it's scope for each of the artifacts as you go through. Right? Let's pick up something else. Let's go to an operator, because people around here use a lot of operators, and the operators that you're going to go find in Operator Hub are also listed here, because it goes out, and it, we can look at the same source they do and present that information. So when you're searching for things, maybe you're searching for just Postgres, you can see the operators next to the charts, and then you can analyze them and choose, what's the right way for me to install this here? And here you're going to see, right, operators have CRDs. And Operators have things like channels and other stuff. And those things you can all go in and explore to find out those specific details. Because, right, what's appropriate for operators is, again, here. And you can see you know, what is in the security report for the images that the operator is using. You can come and see where's the life cycle, right? The operators, they've defined different steps in the life cycles. What is that? It's not only one of the things you can filter on, but you can view it. And we want to make that easily accessible. All right, so let's talk about sharing those artifacts. So we've talked a little bit about, you know, how do you discover them, how do you analyze them, but you've got your own artifacts, you've got your own things. How do you share those artifacts in order to do different things? So I'll touch on a variety of things here. Uh, first, we're going to walk through the different ways. You can share your artifacts for an existing type. So you've got something that you've got, your own artifacts for one of these, and you want to share them. Uh, we're going to talk about new types of artifacts because we're always open to new types of artifacts. How do those things get listed? What does that mean? Um, we can point people to artifacts, right? So you've got some artifact, but now you want to tell people about it. Artifact Hub has some stuff to help you with that. And then you want to share um, through your own tools, right? You've got your own tools. Like I showed you the Helm integration. How does that work? 
and that's API integration. How, you know, how can other tools do the same thing Helm does to make that experience better or easier? All right, so um, let's talk about sharing your own artifacts that are already types that exist today. First, you've got to sign up and then sign in, right? You've got to have an account. We trace it back to people. It's not an anonymous submission. Everything is controlled by accounts and people and things like that. So you sign up and then you sign in, and then you go to the control panel, right? Very simple, straightforward. You've used a web app. It's the same kind of thing, but the control panel is what gives you that power to do a lot of management things. So when you come into the control panel, um, it's pretty basic. This is my logged in account here. And you're gonna see things like repositories, organizations, settings, things like that. And so um, this is where all the magic happens. Under my own personal account, you see in the top right corner there, um, I have no repositories. And that's because everything for me has been linked to organizations. Because we realize people aren't just the ones who share things. A lot of times it's an organization, whether it's an open source project with multiple people or a company or some other organization, you wanna share it as a group, right? You don't want somebody at a company to be that single point of failure if something happens, but they control access and the listing to everything. So organizations are a major part of this to ensure that that's possible. And that's one of those things that can be created, updated, all of those things. And these are the organizations that I'm part of here, which is why you see a bunch of them as one of the admins for some of this stuff. All right, but you know, wherever you're at under any of the different contexts you have for your organization or yourself, you've got an add repository button, right? And it's very, very simple and straightforward, quite frankly, you click the button, you get a form, you fill it out, right? And it's, it's a very straightforward form. Anybody who knows the type will be able to fill in the information and we have help along the way to help you with that. And really just changing to the different types is a drop down. You select the different type, the form updates to the appropriate fields for that, it's just super easy to submit. And that's the whole idea, is a simple, straightforward user experience, which is why so many thousands of things have been listed without getting a lot of support issues, quite frankly. Um, but the default is Helm, because that has been the most popular thing to date, is Helm charts. But lots of other things are available. All right, so let's talk about new types, right? How do you get a new type of thing into Artifact Hub to be listed. It's been done over 20 times. You know, made several new types come in at least every year. I mean, it's been around for less than four, you mean four years now. It's been launched, and we've got over 20 types. So it's about five types a year have been added. Um, and we continue to add types. But I want to give a warning here. The only types that we add are for open organization types. So if a company comes along and says, I'm going to invent this new type of artifact, this new type of package, we don't list those things. It's all coupled to organizations. Right now, everything that you're gonna find is part of the Linux Foundation, and most of it's part of the CNCF, right? And we had to figure out where do you draw that line between listing something or not listing something? And the reason we chose this line was, you know, startup comes along, small company comes along, creates a type, goes away. How do we manage that? How do we manage all of these types and the governance around it? And a very easy thing to do was stick with the Linux Foundation or open orgs, right? If something that comes from the Apache Foundation or something else came along, we'd be open to discussing it. All right, and then it's really simple. You file an issue, right? This is open source, it's up on GitHub. You file an issue. This issue here was uh, for Cube Warden. It's a sandbox policy CNCF project. Um, that uses WebAssembly to write, you know, for all your policies. Write them in any language, compile them to WebAssembly. That's how your policies work. And when they came into the CNCF, they said, hey, we want to be listed. So they filed an issue. And, you know, Sergio and Cynthia, they got to work building that in to it. Uh, and a short time later, with some back and forth to understand what do they look like, what kind of information, because you want to make sure everything's contextually accurate. It's not just generic. What's right for this type of artifact? You learn that, you build it into the engine, and then it's able to be listed. And so it's as simple as file an issue, right? And we'll look at any of the projects out there. There's a lot of them. In fact, there's projects that I didn't even know were in the CNCF until they got listed on Artifact Hub, until they submitted the request. Because there's over 200 projects now, right? Um, but contributions are welcome. One of the big things that I'll say here is, you know, this is an open source CNCF project. It's Apache 2. It's part of the CNCF. It's an incubating project. Anybody can come con contribute to it. 
So if you see a, a bug on the site and you want to dig in, if you've got a new type that you want to do and maybe other priorities, you know, we're not able to get to it fast enough, contributions are welcome. Everything's in Git. You can see how past ones were done. You can see the context. You can propose a pull request. And of course, we'll look at it. So, we, you know, any of the CNCF projects here, they're open to contributions. Remember that. All right? Then you want to get into how do I share my stuff, right? Through all of this, um, I've got something listed. I want to tell people about it. I want to point it back to Artifact Hub. I want to make that easy. We have done some stuff to try to make that easier. Um, and so if you go to any of the pages in here, so Artifact Hub itself, right, you're running it, it's actually a chart. You can grab Artifact Hub and install it, and it's listed in Artifact Hub. And they, Artifact Hub's a good example because it leverages most of the features you're gonna find for its type. And you can see what those things are, from the value schemas to whatever. Um, even, it, it doesn't do signing, but there's actually a badge for signing for projects that do um, sign their stuff if you're into provenance. But if you go to the top right corner there, you got the three dots. And hidden behind those three dots is the ability for an embed widget. And with an embed widget, right, you can choose that, and you get a form to kind of pick some different things. You can pick some characteristics about it for this artifact. And once you've chosen them, you can copy it, and you get something you can embed into a website. So if you want something that looks nice, that sits in the sidebar of your website or on your project, we provide an embed widget that ties back to Artifact Hub. You can see how many people start it there. You can see some of the characteristics about it. And it'll update as the details update on there. And so this is one of those ways where we do help provide some things to help broadcast, hey, it's here. But it's not just there. Uh, let's go back to the repositories here. So I went back into my control panel with this one, and I said, all right, I've got different repositories here. And this is, this is my SUSE one, because I work at SUSE. And we've got some container images, because you can actually list OCI images here as well. So we've got this OCI image here. I said, I want to tell people about this repository. I want to tell people about this. So you can get a badge, right? Badges are everywhere. You got a badge. And you can get a badge. And you can see the example right above the copy there of, hey, I've got a badge that can point people back to this and tell people about it. And we've got it for Markdown and ASCII doc because some of the projects around here actually use ASCII doc for their documentation, for their readmes. And we recognize that across projects. And so this is a way, another way you can kind of tell people, hey, my artifact's out there. Hey, look at Artifact Hub. You can get more information about it. You can analyze it in a nice UI and take a look at it. Because we realize we want to build this ecosystem up and make it easy for people to share, discover, and all of that stuff. All right. Now, you want to share through your tools, kind of like what Helm does. And we want people to be able to do this and make it easy. And there's a number of tools out there that do this today. So. Helm does this, I showed this before, um, and this is really just tying back in to the API, right? Artifact Hub has an API. You can find it artifacthub.io slash doc slash API, and you can get into the full API. So you can write an outside application that interacts with all of the different parts, whether it's searching or categories or any of that, you can build on it because we've got a full spec. You can try out, take it for a spin, open API, it's there. Please use it if you've got tools. We want to make these integrations possible. And we have tools that will, uh, are out there. And for some of it, if your tool is going to ping this too hard, we will throttle it. We'll contact you if we can figure out who it is. Because we've had people write integrations that pound on it. So this is a CNCF project, right? It is, you know, the infrastructure is funded out of the Linux Foundation, you know, through how they fund infrastructure. So if you're going to beat on it heavily, you know, you can run your own instance of Artifact Hub and get the API and feed your own stuff into it. But we do ask that people be respectful of the API if they're going to do this. Um, but that is how anybody can write the same integrations that Helm has and that people use today. All right. So with that, I'm not getting bugged on the time here. Um, does anybody have any questions? I'm happy to field any questions about it. I only showed a glimpse of what we had. There's things in the sidebar, like you can see related projects. That's all, you know, if I go to search for something in Postgres, I scroll down, it's gonna find related Postgres projects for other artifact types I might be interested in. Things like policies, when I go install Postgres, things like that. We do try to surface some of their information. There's a bunch of stuff in there, go play around. But I'm now happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Any questions? All 
All right, I'll take that as a sign that there's no questions. Um, I gave time for it. The URL up there is where you can get the slides or find out any of the, oh, please. Yeah. I have no idea if anybody's done anything with Jupyter Notebook. I don't know if anybody has done anything. So the question for the recording and everything is, has anybody done an integration with a Jupyter Notebook? Not to my knowledge. Um, there's other applications out there. That would be an interesting one. Yeah. I'm working on the Inspector Gadget project, and we have uh, Inspector Gadgets as one of the types of the artifacts in Artifact Hub. Do you guys have a roadmap for any analytics outside of just the visits uh, for the actual artifacts, like unique visitors maybe, or even some like clickstream data? I would be like really curious to see if someone visits one gadget in this case would where do they go after that, that sort of situation? Do you have any roadmap or look into the future for those who are publishing these? So the question, yeah, so thank you for the question. Uh, no, we don't have a roadmap for any more advanced analytics of where people are going and where they go, but I do like that suggestion. Um, if you want, please go over there and file it as a suggestion and we can talk about it over there. I like it, please uh, file an issue for that. I appreciate that. Hi, uh, is there any integrations which have been done with JFrog Artifactory? I'm sorry, with, oh, with Artifactory? With Artifactory, yeah. Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Okay. The, are, you know, the folks at JFrog may have written some integration with it, mm -hmm. but at this point, I'm not aware of it. How could an integration look like? If, what would an integration look like? Yeah, with Artifact, Artifact Hub, if I integrate with JFrog, what are the users you could think of? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know what they would do for it. Uh, I could dream up lots of ideas where okay. they could find an artifact or you know, provide for their customers to provide an artifact and maybe one click to mirror it and keep up to date. There's lots of neat integrations they could do that way, um, but that would be up to them with their product and their product management and whatever okay. teams to decide. But there are lots of possibilities for integrations and easing workflows for customers. Okay, uh, just one last question. Um, yeah. In JFrog Artifactory, we usually go out there and set up uh, the open source remote repos to proxy into the company. Um, can this be used as a, one of the remote repos and just use it like a remote yeah, sync so or something? Yeah. This, this is not a, a repository in itself. It is yep. a kind of a distributed search. And so when you go look for artifacts, they're actually all over, distributed all over the internet. You know, so a company like uh, Bitnami, right? People are familiar with the Bitnami charts catalog. It's probably the most widely known one. You know, VMware hosts that one, and this exposes it. And so we've got all their metadata and information, but we're the ones who expose that to be found and easily searched. And so if somebody were gonna mirror it, they would mirror it from the source, but we could make that metadata available. Discover it, here's where the repository is. You could use the APIs to automate a bunch of it, but we in ourselves are not a host for the artifacts. Um, we let the individual companies do that because they like to have control. They like to have different workflows rather than they create them and publish them. And that was one of the things we found all the way back in the Helm days was that trying to create one central place to store them where everybody had their own workflows is incredibly hard. So just let them do their own way, store it their own way, um, pay for the bandwidth costs in their own way, and then uh, we make it easily discoverable for people to find them, use them, integrate them into their workflows, so you still have that centralized feel. All right, Make All right. thank you. All right, so I'm about out of time here. Uh, if you wanna talk afterwards, I'm happy to step out and continue the conversation. Uh, so thank you all.